Okay, the time of discovery. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. That's... There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? No. Wait, let's press on this. The power was out. Are you sure it was a television and not a radio? Well, no, I guess it might have been a radio. Incidentally, there was no radio on the premises. There was only one large television. Right. I can't put my finger on it, but something about this seems fishy. Something about hearing the television. The witness has testified here at the time. Oh, but that was three hours off, wasn't it? Presents, um, blackout report, noon to 6 p.m. He was saying it was at 4 p.m. Television should have been off. Hold it right there. The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it. You couldn't have heard a television or a video. Yeah. I will. Er. Uh, the defense has a point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Sawit? No, I. I find it quite puzzling myself. Quite. Ah. But. Wait, I remember now. Mr. Sawit. The court would prefer to heal, hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. That, and you seem rather distraught. My apologies, your honor. It, er, it must have been a shock, uh, the shock of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Salt. Let's hear your testimony one, once more, please. Hearing the time. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a terrible clock. There was a table clock in the apartment. Terrible clock. Uh, I wasn't there. Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to kill the victim. That must have been what I saw. You saw a clock? I guess that would explain it. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Gladly. Wait, so he saw... The weapon was a clock. He saw... There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. The murder weapon? Yes, the table clock that was used as a weapon. That's what I just said. Did you throw those off in the middle of the testimony or something? Something's fishy here. Uh, this was the murder weapon. Objection! Objection. Wait, just a moment. murder weapon wasn't a clock. It was the statue. Now, how is this supposed to be a clock? What? Well, you, you with your objections and your evidence, just who do you think you are? I mean, he is a legal lawyer, so, uh, just answer the question, Mr. Sawit. Hey, I, I saw it there, okay? That's a clock. Your Honor, if I may. Yes, Mr. Payne. As the witness stated, this statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch. You just tilt it and it says the time out loud. As it doesn't look like a clock, I submitted it as a statue. My apologies. I see. So the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness's testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with this testimony now? Um, yes. 
Your Honor. There is a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a claw is to hold it in his hand. Yet the witness testifies he never entered the apartment. Clearly a contradiction. Hmm. Indeed. The witness knew it was a clock because he went to the apartment. You're lying. You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. Oh yeah? Prove it. Prove I went in there. I'll do better than that. I can prove you were the one who killed her. You struck her with the clock, and the chalk of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That was the sound you heard. Order in the court. Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Saw it. The sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. The voice was burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. Well, what's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. Baseless? Just look at the witness's face. Mm. Grr. Would the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? I... I... That day, I... I never... Look, I... The clock... I heard... No, I mean... I, I saw... Something... Uh... There went a wig. <laughs> shut up, shut up, shut up. I hate you. I... It was him, I tell you. I saw him. That... That... It looks like he's unbuttoning his shirt. He killed her. And he should burn. Burn. Give him death. Order. Order in the court, I say. Your Honor, uh, a moment please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claims. Mr. Wright. Your Honor. You claim the sound the witness heard came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? The whole case is riding on this. I'd better think this through. Yes, Your Honor. The sound Mr. Saw heard was definitely this clock. A fact which is clear if you simply... Okay, so... If you heard the clock, you try sounding it. Uh, I can check the batteries. Why would I ask the neighbors? I don't think... You could examine the clock's batteries. I don't think that would do anything. Try sounding it. Let's sound the clock now, here in this court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? I ask the court to listen very carefully. Beep. I think it's 8.25. This is certainly is a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker after all. So, we've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? It's 11.25. Ah, the time zone difference between uh, the vacation area she was. Back. As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between Mr. Sawit heard and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Sawit, try to talk your way out of this one. Ha, ha, ha. You forgot one thing. Oh, uh, what's he talking about? While it may seem like the clock is running three hours slow, it proves nothing. How do you know it was running three hours slow the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case. He's right. How am I going to prove that? Damn it, I was so close. Mr. Wright. It seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. Uh, yes, Your Honor. This means I cannot let you indict the witness. Unfortunately, this ends the cross-examination of Mr. Frank Sott. I come all the way down here to testify and look what happens. They treat me like a criminal. A criminal. You lawyers are all slime. Yeah, I almost had him. Sorry, Larry. I failed you. There's nothing I can do about it now. 
Not so fast, Mr. Sonic. Me, I mean, Chief. Listen up, right? Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think. But, but Chief, it's over. I can't prove the clock was slow on the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yes. But that doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking out of the box. Don't waste time doubting the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow and think through it. Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason and you'll have your proof. Right, right? Can you think of a reason as to why the clock was three hours slow? Yes. Wait. Maybe I can prove it. You must have evidence somewhere that can prove it. This, right? Find it and let them have it. Well, Mr. Wright, you say the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found evidence to support this claim? Of course. There's a piece of evidence in the courtroom that can prove my claim beyond a doubt. Huh. <laughs> Tough words. Let's see you pull this one off. Uh, which one was exactly? Uh, the passport, I believe? Yes, the passport. Uh, let's see this evidence that proves why the clock was running so slow. Present. Present. Uh, the victim had just returned home from abroad the day of the murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is 9 hours. When it's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. the next day there. The clock wasn't 3 hours slow, it was 9 hours fast. The victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in the apartment was wrong. Proof enough for you, Mr. Sot? Or should I say, Mr. Did It? Oh, that one hurt physically. Uh, he... He's dead. Phoenix has committed his first murder. Order, order, I say. Well... Well... This case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your client? 